Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, it's really great being here. I'm completely inspired so far with the other pre presenters. Um, and um, it's been such a great experience just visiting Halifax. Um, I wanted, I teach at Parsons the New School for Design in, um, in a department um, called the Integrated Design Program. And I specifically teach within an alternative fashion um, track in there. So students um, uh, who, uh, who enter that program are interested in um, socio-political ideas relative to a clothing in the body, um, identity, uh, uh, and how it relates to fashion and um, sustainability and um, ethical fashion practices. So that's sort of the context of, um, of where I teach. Um, and I've been very involved in a research project called Textile Lab um, that is part of my teaching practice but then also part of my studio practice. So um, I just wanted to give you sort of a context because I want to open this up and because my uh, presentation is going to revolve around Textile Lab. And um, I wanted to show you um, a very short two-minute film that uh, the school uh, made that shows the textile lab in action. And it's really great because the students are talking in it. So I wanted you to see that. So we're going to look at that, and then I'm going to um, show you some other images. this class I was just expecting that you know Laura is going to come in teach us how to spin teach us how to crochet but it goes so far beyond just learning these crafts it, it, it puts us in touch with sustaining local markets I think this project is very important for students studying fashion design it's about kind of an old craft that we are missing in our day and age and we go around with our designer minds and we make things and we critique things and we look at them but a lot of times we don't understand their life cycles and the way that they are put together. Natural dyeing is about studying a sustainable way to dye material and, and fiber but it's also about this fusion between farming and textile production. So we're using the market as the classroom. It's a place where we're getting our materials from and we're here to learn with the community. And it's fantastic because her students are coming here and teaching us something and giving us a chance to promote the different yarns available and promote our farmers and get the word out. So they're even using vegetables to make the dye. So what, do you have beet dye in there? No, we have marigold. Onion dye? Oh, yeah, dye. And carrot top. Carrot top dye? This class is first about learning process and then about solving problems. So we spent the first half of the semester really working with how we can manipulate fabrics. And then the second half is going to be selling anything that we make at the green market. We're gonna come back in, in a couple of weeks and we're gonna actually work with the wearable collections people and we're gonna take used clothing from them and we're gonna have students remake this clothing into a product that we can actually give back to the green market uh, to grow NYC to sell and raise money for their mission. We have just started the process of creating some products and figuring out what are the best types of products to sell at the green market. We also created surveys and asked people at the green market what types of products they would like to see there and trying to find out you know, what would be the most popular, what would work out for us to sell. As a design and management student, I think it's really important for us to learn this way because we're studying to be innovative. And this is the only way we can be it truly innovative is if we know every single step to the process. We are creating a, like a sustainable network and hopefully it will like employ more people and create a new economic system basically. <laughs> and it's like this natural dyeing class could possibly be at the forefront of all that, which is really exciting. <laughs> um, okay, so Textile Lab is an ongoing um, project that examines environmentally responsible uh, textile production methods and, commu and community-based systems of production. 
So we have this. We have a few <laughs> mobile labs that we um, that we bring into the uh, green market. We work in the context of the Grow NYC green market in New York City, um, where we um, where we uh, research the, the plants for dyes. Um, Grow My C is um, an organization that promotes environmental programs for, for uh, neighborhoods all over the city. Um, and the Green Market program, that initiative um, started in, in, um, in uh, 1976, and it's, it's still um, you know, <laughs> operating. This is at Union Square, which is in the neighborhood of the students. So we harvest our plants at the markets to examine environmentally safe methods of dyeing and creating textiles. Uh, we also handcraft with regional wool. The work that, that, we, do, that we do with Textile Lab uh, examines the interconnectedness of products and systems like textiles and farming and food production. It also raises awareness about the life cycle and environmental impact of uh, products, consumer products like food and clothing. We exchange knowledge with visitors about artisanal um, textile methods like the process of creating dyes from plants. And we engage in um, textile construction methods like spinning and knitting and crocheting and felting. We talk about the relationship that these handcrafting methods have to industrial production. We also talk about um, uh, the life cycle and um, and the regional ecology of, of the clothing that we wear. There's a big economic uh, focus to the work that um, is underway with Textile Lab. Um, as we work within the Grow My Sea Green Markets, we really draw attention to the importance that the local marketplace has to, um, to the agribusinesses in the greater state of New York. And not only, um, and this is like the economic importance, it's, there, it's critical. And this isn't only the uh, vegetable and fiber farms, but also, uh, sorry, the vegetable and flower farms, but also the, the fiber farms. We also explore collective forms of making and what that means uh, uh, to, uh, to community. So just to give you a little bit of a background, um, I moved to upstate New York in 2003 from, from New York City, about 65 miles from the city um, to the Hudson Valley. And um, I was living on a farm, and it's pictured here, and um, the, my neighbor, who is a farmer, was tending the, to the property, he was farming the land, and he also sells at the Grow NYC Green Markets. So um, I started to become really interested in the link between upstate New York and, um, and the city, and I was a practicing artist and designer. I was already implementing sustainable methods of, de of design in my studio, so I decided to start looking to my immediate environment, which is the farm, to find materials like to dye with, and also I looked to nearby fiber farms in, um, in that area, in that region of New York. So I was exploring the changes in the season on the property where I was living, and thinking about um, the life cycle of plants, and how colors change, and, and how maybe that can influence our design decisions. Working with the regional fleece and wool. Um, so this is just to give you like a sort of a geographic reference. Um, you can see where New York City is, and you can see the um, size of New York City. And that is the whole state of New York, which is, is, is quite large. And the Hudson Valley, where I live, is is um, all highlighted in red, as well as New York City. And, and I got very interested in how such a small geographic area that was so heavily populated had such a strong, um, critical economic effect on the larger you know, state of New York. I thought about the interconnectedness of products and, 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 and systems and how designers, how we could like take advantage of this and um, use this interconnectedness to benefit um, communities. So as a way to deal with the problems that we see here, you know, like with um, our, our habits with consumption and our unethical manufacturing, you know, practices, um, I thought it would be a really great place to look here at the local marketplace and to the local farm. So, um, through the practice of natural dye, we explore how you can think holistically about one um, 
one product that we grow and how many other functions from one single or organic material are possible. Like, for example, the, on the skins from the onions that we eat, right? Those can be used as dye. And the tops from carrots. Um, so um, I just want to let you know that, that that purple color on the bottom is actually from the, uh, the body of the purple carrot itself. And that was some of my student research. I have a whole database of research online that I will share with you at the end of the presentation. Um, these are res resist dyed studies. Um, they're batik studies. Um, we were um, using the, bees wa um, the beeswax from the honey producers at the market and um, exploring um, resist dyeing. We look to the meat farmers for materials like yarn. Um, this is uh, student work, actually, from uh, one of my students from Integrated Design Program, this garment. Uh, she, she made it using local uh, wool. And we also look to, uh, to the meat producers for uh, skins and leather. Um, so um, we're, we're uh, working with a local tannery currently. Um, who buy, you know, who gets his skins from, uh, from the meat producers. So this shoe uh, was actually designed by an integrated design student of mine, and he was using the local wool along with um, the leather together to, to uh, craft the shoe. So localized networks are uh, an important aspect to the culture of the green market also. The farmers direct you to artisans and other um, small businesses uh, who provide services to the, farm, to the farmers in the community. So um, this is Meyer and Sons. This is a leather tannery that, you know, we, we kind of, I kind of just um, um, found through the farmers, basically. And um, you're seeing a visit with my students to the tannery, and they learned about the process of, process of uh, tanning leather. And um, the other set uh, on the left hand, on, well, on your right hand side, uh, is the Hudson Valley Sheep and Wool Company. They're, um, they're a fiber farm that I do a lot of work with, both through the school and then through my studio work. Um, and they're visiting the school and teaching the students uh, fiber processing and spinning. Um, and pictured below is their fiber processing studio. With, they have um, industrial spinners and carding machines and felting machines. So the green market provides a place for alternative systems of exchange like a place where people can bring their materials in exchange for a service that benefits the environment. Um, so it's not so much about a, a monetary exchange necessarily, like the, this is the composting station and they're providing a service for, for, for people who visit the green market, they can come and they'll take their waste and then the composting people actually make it into usable soil that they sell back to the community. So it's just like kind of a slight shift in, in this normal sort of exchange of money for, for, for service. It's more about like taking waste, turning it into something like a product, something valuable, and then reselling it. Textile recycling, and, and this was highlighted in, in, the, in, the, um, in the short film, uh, is another service, right? This is Wearable Collections, they're a private company. They have a station at the market, um, and they collect the, these products from, um, you know, the. Uh, uh, textile waste from, from the visitors of the market, and then they resell it. And we tried to intervene and actually take some of that, uh, those, that clothing, and we remade it. This was the, that project that you saw. Um, students handcrafted these little change purses for um, Grow MYC to sell at their fundraising event. We wanted to give back to this really important organization um, that you know, f fosters the, uh, the economy in upstate New York. Um, and um, so these are crafted um, through, um, it's a combination of the local wool felted in and, and, and um, natural dyeing, printing with natural dyes and stitching, all sorts of methods. And each student made their own. The local marketplace provides a form for bartering between um, producers. So the farmers inherently work uh, outside of the dominant system of monetary exchange. They just naturally do it. They trade things. Um, working together can also uh, offer an alternative way to exchange goods for services. We worked um, at the Unisura Green Market um, with an organization called Our Goods, which is a, a bartering um, network, online network. And um, we worked on a project called Unsold Supper. It took place, you know, right there in the marketplace. Um, 
it was a social event for, for the farmers and for the community, the people who, who shop at the green market. And um, the green market farmers bartered their food in exchange for a handcrafted textile. Um, so we cooked dinner and um, people were invited to sit down and make something for the farmers. And then they got fed <laughs> after. So um, that's how that worked. And here are just some pictures of that happening. Um, so the event explored the relationship between producers uh, and consumers outside of the dominant paradigm of capitalist exchange and production. So what can we do uh, as consumers and producers you know, to help the well-being of our, of our communities? Well, everybody, I, I know I'm probably speaking to the converted here, but you know, become a locavore if you haven't already. But not only with food, I mean, you know, this has to do with clo you know, clothing production, material products, too. Um, this is a picture of, of my town in upstate New York. Um, it's called Beacon, Beacon, New York. Um, this is, you know, where I live. Um, it was an economically vibrant city um, from its founding in the 1700s up until, like, the 1960s. Um, it was a hub for... Um, manufacturing and like many upstate towns like in the 70s the manufacturing started to dwindle and go overseas so therefore the town suffered dramatically you know economically um, and um, I mean this, they uh, this was a place where they say there was like 150 um, hat manufacturers here located here which is hard to, I mean it's a very small town so that's like it was it was a serious manufacturing hub um, so it has, um, so in the 1970s, or it, 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 a downturn um, sort of happened with the town. And then um, things have started to change in the past decade, uh, due largely to the artists and the artists and community that has relocated there because of the close proximity to New York City. Um, there's like an express train that goes right to the city from here. And also this uh, huge interest in local farming has, has helped that, uh, you know, that it's, be, it's made this area become very like, desirable. So this is a, a textile lab project that we did on Main Street in tandem with, a, um, with something called Windows on Main Street, which um, is an annual art event where artists are asked to propose to hang something in all the storefronts in, in, um, in Beacon. And we decided to sit in front of the storefront and create a collaborative textile. Um, with the visitors and the residents of, um, of uh, Beacon. And we incorporated, so we were using local wool that was naturally dyed, found, you know, found in the region. Um, and um, we integrated business cards uh, from all the local businesses into the textile. Um, and then we gave the textile to the business who let us like sit out in front of their um, storefront. So. Um, this project celebrates our community's ability to revitalize itself through this resurgence of farming um, and handcrafting and local production. It also draws a connection between history, place, ecology, and labor through craft and design. So something else besides buying local is that we can think about reusing, repurposing. And you know, I know I'm reiterating some ideas that we've already you know, have been um, touched on, but it's just, I, I mean, I, it's been such a great experience doing this particular project, this mending. It's called the Mending Project, and we're doing this with Textile Lab at the green markets. People are at, uh, we're asking people to come and mend their clothing with us. And um, they, people have all sorts of stories about their clothing. Um, and it's, uh, we provide the materials. We have our, our leather from our local tannery, leather patches, and we have people needle felting into their old sweaters. So um, people sit with us, and here's just some pictures of this event. Um, it's, very, it's very enjoyable. Um, so we can also support ethical man uh, manufacturers, OK? Um, Green Eileen is an initiative of the New York-based clothing designer um, and manufacturer Eileen Fisher. Green Eileen is a recycled clothing program. It's committed to reducing waste, of, you know, clothing waste. Um, and generating income to support uh, programs for women and, and girls. She has a supporting women initiative through her company where she gives money to programs that help uh, 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 women entrepreneurs. And 
Um, and um, also she feeds money into other organizations for, for women. Um, but this is, a, this is a, a take back sort of scheme for, for cl her clothing company. She's, you know, she's a big manufacturer. Um, and um, so uh, she, ha she takes back the secondhand slightly worn clothing and resells it in these Green Eileen stores. And then she also has, uh, takes back third what they consider third hand clothing that they remake into um, other products. So we're commissioned to do some work with them. They also take, uh, do things with the third hand clothing like they do community oriented um, workshops. So I'm involved in that. And, um, and this is a product, picture of a prototype uh, using their um, used clothing and uh, mixed with the regional wool from, um, from, from a female owned farm in upstate New York. So this is sort of like nice. It's, it's, it's sort of supporting her mission, but then helping the local, the very local economy also. So um, businesses can consider alternative ways. So this is about production now. So we were talking about con the consumers sort of, you know, what we can do. And, and as producers, things can happen too, right? Businesses can consider alternative ways to um, structure themselves, for example, um, in a way that they can structure themselves in a way that addresses uh, fair labor practices, for example, uh, worker-owned um, enterprises and collectives are examples of that. The value in re, um, reorganizing the way we do business is that it can really benefit our communities. And, and there, there are a lot of successful models of this um, in all sectors of service and, and manufacturing in the U.S., and some of them are quite large. You know, they're not all t very small, some of them are large. Um, this is um, a clothing designer and manufacturer, Alabama Channon. Um, you, oh, some of you might be familiar with her, her work. Um, she organizes labor uh, within her company in a pro very progressive way. Each piece is made by hand by someone in her community. Um, and these people also have lost their jobs due to, because she lives in a, in a rural area down south, and these people have lost their jobs also due to the uh, outsourcing of, of um, manufacturing. So she's kind of providing this other way for people to make money. Um, and each piece is made by hand. The, the money goes back into the community. The people who make the work are kind of run their own mini business. So it sort of operates like a collective. Like they're in charge of how, much, how many pieces they produce and how much work that they do. Um, so she really makes a positive impact on her community, her, and her company also uses um, organically sourced cotton that's grown in the U.S. And, um, farmers and handcrafting communities um, inherently self-organize um, in, in a collective way so that they can sustain themselves. This is a women-owned and operated farm. This is the Hudson Valley Sheep and Wool Company. They provide facilities to, um, to other farmers you know, in the area in terms of um, fiber processing. Uh, they trade materials and they share production costs. They're actually carding here. Uh, I'm sorry, they're actually uh, um, skirting. Um, so you can also form partnerships. Um, you know, as you're producing things, uh, we can consider partnering with other organizations like collectives and guilds uh, in an effort to bring income and opportunity to others. You know, there's power in that as well. Um, this is a picture of the fiber processing studio at the Hudson Valley Sheep and Wool um, and their yarn shop with their felt. And um, I'm designing felt rugs with them uh, now. These are, these are made from the sheep that grow right on their farm and they're, um, they're hand dyed um, using natural dyes and felted using their, in their, they have these felting machines. So, um, just this is sort of a, in conclusion, I just want to say that all of these initiatives that I talked about, um, they can be achieved if we work on a micro scale. And that's what this, that's what like kind of turning to the green market is all about. Um, I believe that all change begins at a local level. Um, and we can shift our economic system um, so that it benefits people and the environment if we work within our communities. That's it. <laughs> um, one last thing before I. I just wanted to show you, these are, the, these are websites that you might be really interested in. One of, one of them is mine, and you can, you, you can get a link to the Textile Lab blog there on the top. And then also underneath is the Urban Dyer's Almanac, which has been, it's like a compilation of all the uh, dyeing research I've done with students uh, at the green markets. 
Thank you.